So affirmative action just recently got abolished for colleges in North Carolina and Harvard. It says that colleges and universities may no longer factor race into admissions after the Supreme Court ruled six to three to end affirmative action in a consolidated decision handed down Thursday. The end of race conscious college admissions will have a particularly outsized impact on women of color. In other words, we not giving y'all no more handouts. For context, there are nine justices that make up the Supreme Court, right? One chief justice and eight associate justices. Now take a look at this picture for context, of course, and get an idea of who is making the decisions behind this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are already nine states in the United States that have banned race-based affirmative action, okay? Nine states have already banned affirmative action. Those states are California, Washington, Florida, Michigan, Nebraska, Arizona, New Hampshire, Oklahoma, and Idaho. And now you're about to have two more that are joining in on the ban. Now, for those of you who do not know what affirmative action is, just to give a better definition so that we're all clear and have an understanding of what exactly affirmative action is supposed to do, affirmative action is intended to promote the opportunities of defined minority groups within a society to give them equal access to that of the majority population. In other words, it's designed to give Black people, and not just black people, but mostly when you think of minority groups, blacks will be included. So it's designed to give those type of smaller groups the same type of access and the same type of networking opportunities that the majority of the population have. Now here's my thing. What we don't look at is the fact that in these universities, how far you will go and what you actually learn and the level of degree you leave with isn't predicated on your intelligence, but rather how much you can pay. And of course, I'm not talking about the 1% of students that have been able to secure a full ride scholarship. You guys don't count. But see, that other 99% of students have to figure out on some level, even those that have minor scholarships or have uh, half right scholarships, that other 99% of students has to figure out tuition, room and board, books, and living expenses, while simultaneously managing the trials that come with stepping into adulthood, right? As of 2022, 43 0.5 million Americans had student loan debt that they owed the government. And we're not talking about five to ten thousand dollars worth of debt. Try twenty to forty and fifty thousand dollars worth of debt. And for so many, this will set the rest of their life up for a situation that would have them in a perpetual state of IOU. Having money and having the knowledge to manage that money are two totally different things. You'd be surprised the number of people that have six figure paying jobs and are still living paycheck to paycheck because teaching our children about how money works and how to be financially literate isn't the focus. We see we're too busy. We're too busy arguing and fighting about whether or not teachers should be allowed to talk about gay and trans relationships to six year olds. The don't say gay bill. Over 1.75 trillion in total student loan debt. Almost 30,000 old per student on average when they leave college. Now, are you saying nobody should go to college? No. If this is going to be the standard, then some of us that want to get into certain rooms and have certain careers are gonna have to play by their rules. And there are plenty of success stories from people that have attended college and are doing well. They're well off. But what I am saying is that making the decision to go to college shouldn't cost young adults 
who on average can't even afford to live life with a roommate, the cost of a down payment on a home. The price of college has done nothing but increase over the years, and the government just keeps raking in that dough. But honestly, I believe that all colleges should be abolished, done away with. And before y'all disagree and jump off a cliff and get mad at me, let's read an article that was written about two years ago saying the very same thing that I'm saying here today. And there are some undeniable truths in it. So let's just read together. So I came across this one on... Instagram and Michelle Obama spoke about this and uh, I'm going to read what she says before I get on to, an, to the eventual article that I want to read everybody. Uh, former First Lady Michelle Obama spoke about the Supreme Court's Thursday ruling against for affirmative action, recalling her own struggle to feel a sense of belonging as one of the few black students at her university. She says so often we just accept that money, power and privilege are perfectly justifiable forms of affirmative action. While kids growing up like I did are expected to compete when the ground is anything but level. So today, my heart breaks for any young person out there who's wondering what their future holds and what kind, what kinds of chances they will have and that will be open to them. That's what she had to say. Now, of course, we can all agree with her plight, right? We can agree with that message. You feel sorry for students who know that now the unlevel playing field that they were on with any type of hope that they would be chosen to be placed on a more level playing field, that is done for those students in those states. Let's read the article though. That is titled, College Must Be Abolished. Now I want y'all to listen very closely about what I'm gonna read because this there are so many great points in this. I want, I want people to understand, and your kids should understand, that college is a business decision. College is absolutely a business decision, just like relationships and marriage. I believe marriage is a business decision. Y'all can get mad. Y'all can turn up your nose. You can pout about it. But marriage is a business decision. You need to understand that when you go into a covenant with another person, that you are tying yourself to that person's finances, that person's history, that person's psychological beliefs and psychological uh, position, as well as that person's financial thought process. You got to deal with all of that. Marriage is absolutely 100,000% a business decision and if we start treating it like that instead of just the, oh I love I just love 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 don't pay no goddamn bills that's just the facts what bill has love paid so let's read the article really quickly article by Peter Merrill's when was this written this was written in May 19 of uh on May 19th of 20, 2021 so two years ago this was written, but it still applies today. Let's read. In the United States, colleges are not so much educational centers as they are economic epicenters for local communities. Ask any small town mayor of a so-called college town what the municipal budget will look like or prioritize. And he will not talk about the citizens, but he'll, prob he'll probably refer to the local college as an economic engine that needs to be expanded or preserved. It says, in America, the sector of tertiary education is one of the largest employers on the continent. A college of even just 1,000 students hires dozens of menial staff, hundreds of faculty, and as of late, hold on to even more administrators and administrative assistants than actual faculty. Those 1,000 college students attending a middle-of-nowhere or no-name college are eager to burn their parents' money rather than continue the pretense of mediocre education, which leads to merchants that set up around the campus borders and tailor to those wasteful impulses. See, everything comes back to the money. I'm a person that heart, wholeheartedly believes that everything comes back to the money. As such, a college in the United States is not a place of learning, but a hub of services. Millions of dollars in inflated tuition, 
unnecessary salaries and questionable impulses pass through the halls every single year. Not to mention, propping up the technology and real estate sectors in seasonal laptop and apartment sales, both of which start to become overpriced, much like everything else purchased by and marketed towards our students, your children. But there may be no need for college at all. The open sewer of fraud and bad faith loans that college recruiters depend upon to scam American high schoolers into su supplementing their own government paychecks and educational subsidies is both a lifeline and a gold mine. For small towns that dragnet underachieving students with promises of the mythical university degree. Despite their bad grades and lazy demeanor and habits, that would preempt them from a scholarship or acceptance to a better place of learning. And for shady universities who tell high schoolers that their campus will give them some kind of non-existent prestige or exclusivity because they prey on students with a 3.5 to 4.0 GPA, GPA yet still offer an education that is left wanting versus a Udemy or Khan Academy course. As students are lied to about, the about what the nature of colleges are, they can often miss the signs that a college is not useful to them at all. Colleges are not meant to educate students above all else, but meant to exploit students for financial gain. How can you argue with that? How You've seen it. You know somebody, if you're not that person, I'm sure you know somebody that went to college and wasted thousands upon thousands of tens of thousands of dollars and came away from that college with nothing. Or they came away with something, a little piece of paper, and they're still working a job just like you are that pays anywhere from 30 to 40 to $50,000, $60,000 a year with a college degree. But I'm crazy. For not thinking, for thinking rather that colleges should be abolished, done away with, all these useless ass degrees that we all tend to go to college for, all these useless ass degrees, nothing in STEM technology, anything that's going to grow the, the economy, none of that. And it goes even deeper when you start to analyze the psychology of school as a whole and begin to see that young boys and young men shouldn't be forced to sit in classrooms for eight hours every day while their minds and bodies are begging to be stimulated with activity and hands-on learning. There's a reason girls and young women are more likely to get better grades and graduate with higher GPAs than boys. The system we have set up is not geared towards teaching in a way that appeals to young boys. It's an outdated format that was a one size fits all answer to teaching every child in, every, in, in the same way, in one way. So what do you suppose, what do you suggest then? What do you suggest? I told my boys to go into, excuse me. I told my boys to go into fields that the world needs. Simple as that. Go into areas of work and specialties that the world needs. Electricians, carpentry, mechanical engineering. Those are all, listen, there are so many things out there that the world, that we need, that our society needs, and that you don't have to go to college for. You can go to trade school for. And you can, and you can pay your money a lot less than what these colleges are asking and be done in about, in some cases, you can be done in about two to five years, depending on what you're looking for. But do I think that college is the answer for everyone? Absolutely not. College is not, is not the answer to everyone. Now, for some, as I said before, some people have gone to college, gotten their degree, and they're doing quite well. But is that the standard that we want to try to force onto every child everywhere? Everybody don't learn the same way. 
Everyone doesn't retain the same amount of knowledge. That's all I'm saying. Is that there are other there are other ways to get to the goal that should be considered. And college should not be the end all be all of a student. Young adults that have the whole life ahead of them, hadn't, haven't even run into any real adversity yet in life. And we're shoveling them into these systems that are putting them behind the eight ball. Forty and fifty thousand dollars worth of debt. Starting life, you already in the hole. Come on, man. At some point, at some point, you got to look to do things different, right? Why would you, as a person who went to college and came out with a degree, for some of y'all, a bullshit degree, owing tens of thousands of dollars worth of loan money to the government, why would you then repeat that process for your own children and force them to go into the same thing, same situation as you did? Have you learned nothing? Look, those are my thoughts. Leave y'all in the comment. I'll read them all. Promise you that. Check y'all in the next video. Buckle down for the ride. Run that by me one more time before we slide. Life is long, death is short. No suicides. Free your mind, pray to God. Between you and I.